Well, happy anniversary, Temple. On this, your 40th anniversary, is an ideal time for us to pause and to celebrate all of the milestones, the memories, the men and the women, the, the families that have been nurtured under your umbrella. To give thanks for those that took the risk and made that leap of faith that moved you from South Canal Street all the way out here. And that over the years, we have been the beneficiaries of their faith and their sacrifices and their hope that we would pick up their mantle of faith for the next generation. As we celebrate over the next couple of days this 40th anniversary, I hope that eventually we will then begin to catch their spirit, their motivation, their inspiration that will lead on for the next 40 years. So now it's time for us to roll up our sleeves, to begin to believe again and to dream again, to look to the future and to begin to come together that we might be for the next generation, that light on the hill. So on this, your 40th anniversary, congratulations. It is now time for us to live out their dream, their vision, to say thank you for their sacrifice and to come together and thank God for this place, these people, and this dream that made us who we are today. God bless you for all that you do in Beckley and the surrounding communities. This message comes to the church from the Reverend Frank E. Borner, who was a former pastor of our congregation. He titles it Celebration. Thanks for the opportunity to express my gratitude for Temple's witness for Christ on the hill. I give thanks to God, the congregation, and especially the trustees for making good, godly, creative witness. I am especially grateful for Bishop Wesley and Reverend Thomas Koch, but even higher reflections flood through my mind, higher than bricks and mortar. When I think of the Methodist temple, I think of the hundreds and thousands of individuals who have loved and served Christ. They have given their hearts, minds, and resources to serve the Lord. Mothers and fathers who have arisen early to awaken their sons and daughters to prepare for Sunday school and worship. Also a devout layman who was at the church early to unlock the doors and set the thermostats, prayer groups, ramp dinners, deep fellowship. I recall with joy the young couples who with excitement and happiness preparing for their wedding, the vows that follow with the lifting sound of organ music. I also remember the exceptional choirs and the great musical programs, especially at Easter and Christmas. My heart has always been touched by the sight of young robed children walking forward to light the altar candles. We thank God. Signed, the Reverend Frank E. Borner. Thank you, United Methodist Temple, for the invitation to join you for the 40th anniversary of the Church on the Hill. I had the great privilege of serving as senior pastor there for 13 years, beginning in 1995 through June of 2008, and what a challenging, exciting, and growing time it was for United Methodist Temple. I must share that the first Sunday that I was there, I was a bit nervous about beginning in that big facility and showed up early the first morning without anybody there and after figuring out how to turn off the alarm system, went immediately into the sanctuary where it was dark and the sun was just starting to rise in the east. 
And as I stood there, suddenly I was bathed in the brilliance of the color of the stained glass. And an inner joy and peace touched me that carried me through 13 years, through many good times and difficult times, through weddings and funerals and seasons and celebrations. Early morning sunrise coming through that window blessed me and centered me. It's really difficult to summarize the 13 years in just a minute or two, but by far from the first Pastor Parish Relations Committee meeting until the final celebration where you were so gracious in our farewell, the thing that stands out most about this great church is my memory of the people, the deeply dedicated men and women and boys and girls who love their God and their families, their church, and their Southern West Virginia community, and showed it with their prayers, their presence, their gifts, and their service. While I was serving here at United Methodist Temple, we made several physical changes to the church. Some of you might remember, we used to have a driveway coming up and going down, and we changed that fairly quickly to one road coming to the church. We topped off the church not too long after that by putting on a steeple. We retired the debt of the original building very quickly, 10 years early actually, and before you knew it, we were planning another building, which we called The Place, a place where the community and the church gathers for church, for study, for sports, for fellowship, for childcare, for youth groups, for a new kind of worship and archery and football and bodybuilding, a place that quickly became a, a place where the community gathered and experienced the love and the hospitality of the people of United Methodist Temple. I loved worship and leading worship at United Methodist Temple. The planners of the physical structure gave us the freedom to create worship in many ways. And did we ever take that opportunity when I was there, while I was serving as pastor. Our sanctuary was moved in every configuration imaginable, as you might remember. Every season of the year, it became Jerusalem during Easter. It became a giant Christmas tree a stage for concerts and plays, special events, and the people attended and increased in their attendance, and we grew in faith and love. I especially remember those years we had dozens of people in the Disciple Bible Study and how that changed our lives and our commitment and our call to ministry. And how can we forget those 10 or 12 years that we took the church beyond our doors to, the, uh, to have the Christmas meal at the Armory, where we served hundreds of lonely and hungry people on Christmas Day, and the fellowship that created among those prepared and those who served. And so many other fellowship opportunities, Lenten festivals, Advent festivals, and something almost every season of the year. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the staff that served over the years. We've been blessed with many deeply committed staff members. Ministry is not a solitary position, and I am so deeply grateful for most of the associate pastors we had, and the youth workers and musicians, and office and custodial personnel who made this place great. And I could go on for hours, but my time is up. But in closing, let me look once more in the past and look toward the future. Because I pray every day that United Methodist Temple will be the light on the hill for this community that it has always striven to be. And if there's one guide or one thing while I was pastor here that kept me focused on that ministry, was what you did when you built the church by putting the baptistry window in. I still see it when I close my eyes. I used it more than any other reference when I planned worship or when I felt 
we were not quite online where we should be. That etching of our Lord Jesus reaching out, but without the facial expressions or the hands or the feet or the ears, because we as the baptized, if we are to do our ministry correctly, are to be the ears, the eyes, the voice, the embrace, the feet of Christ. When it becomes more about me and my wants and less about who we are as Christ, we seek to be the church. So my prayer for you in the next 40 years or 80 or however many is that United Methodist Temple be a blessing to our community and indeed be the eyes and ears and voice and embrace and feet of our Lord Jesus to all that he loves. Happy anniversary. Hello, United Methodist Temple. I've been asked to share some of my thoughts concerning my ministry that took place between 2008 and 2012. My story actually begins in 1982 when I came from grad school and lived in the little community of Craigsville and I came to uh, visit uh, Parker and Colleen who were uh, my mother and father-in-law. It was during that time that Parker took me up to the site and I walked into the building for the very first time. When I walked into the sanctuary, uh, of course, it was not completed at that particular time. But when I walked into the sanctuary and walked uh, toward the front next to uh, the stained glass windows, I looked around at everything that was being done. And in that moment, I had a sense that some way, somehow, I would be the pastor of that church at some point in my life. Well, it was uh, the spring of 2008 and I was a district superintendent in the Midland South District. And after uh, asking two other pastors to come to United Methodist Temple, the bishop asked me if I would be willing to go. Not that I was necessarily the last choice, but the bishop had already extended me into the next year. And my plan was to serve eight years as a district superintendent, and then I was going to retire at the age of 60. So the bishop asked me if I'd be willing to change my plans and if I would be uh, willing to become the lead pastor. I told him, of course, that uh, I would need to be in touch with Vicki and see what she had to say and uh, continue to be uh, thoughtful and prayerful about it. I called Vicki, who was at work, and I said to her, the bishop would like for us to move to United Methodist Temple uh, in July. Uh, are you willing to do that? And she said, it sounds like a great place to be and to serve. And so I told the bishop uh, that we were willing to go and uh, would look forward to it. And uh, we began the process of making the transition. We moved in July of uh, uh, 2008. Uh, I want to say that it was the most difficult transition that I had ever made in any of my ministries. Moving from uh, being a district superintendent back into the local church pastorate was a uh, difficult and challenging time for me personally. I also walked into a situation where there was a lot, a lot of challenge that um, was in front of us. One was is that we had a indebtedness on the place and there was not a, a campaign or a financial plan uh, in which we were uh, able to uh, make our payments, our mortgage payments. And so within uh, three months, I was having to lead in a financial campaign, uh, asking people uh, to uh, give uh, when I had not had very much uh, time to make all the investments that I needed to make before I requested withdrawals uh, from the people. But they were gracious. You folks were so gracious at Temple. And... Um, we had a successful campaign and we moved uh, right into the process of trying to pay off the place. 
Also, I began that uh, summer with a series of sermons I remember entitled, If You Climb in the Saddle, Be Ready for the Ride. I remember placing a saddle on the chancel area, and every Sunday I made my way through the Book of Romans. It was in that preaching series that I began to settle in uh, to the uh, ministry to which God had uh, called me so many years before. One of the highlights of our time um, at Temple was the staff. I have uh, never had a music program the way Daniel Spurgeon provided uh, for the people at Temple and the leadership that he provided uh, in helping me to uh, grow the worship services and the rest of the staff. I appreciated so much uh, the secretarial administrative assistants help, the, the treasurer, those who worked at the place and the preschool. We all worked together as a team and I tried to grow the staff through our staff meetings and um, also uh, to fulfill the vision that I had of connecting people to Jesus Christ. I knew that the church had never met its fullest potential in uh, its years of ministry. So uh, we began to uh, grow uh, the worship service, uh, the two main services, 8.30 and 11. And then in uh, 2011, we added a third service at the place called Journey. And uh, that was led by a new staff person by the name of Cliff Atkins and his wife, uh, Laura, uh, who did an excellent job for us in getting that uh, started. Uh, we continued um, to see that particular ministry and worship grow, and it grew to starting a fourth worship service uh, in uh, late 2011. And uh, as we moved into 2012, and I had made my decision uh, to retire, uh, I uh, experienced, along with everyone else at Temple, one of the largest, if not the largest, worship experience on Easter Sunday of 2012 uh, that uh, the church had ever seen with over 800 people being in attendance. I always felt in every church that Easter attendance showed us what the potential was uh, for growth. It was during those uh, months of early 2012 that I began to uh, help the staff and the church in making its transition um, and to a new uh, pastor. Uh, it was my joy to be able to then share in a final series of sermons entitled A Faith to Retire By. I want to thank the people of United Methodist Temple. I want to thank uh, all of those who participated and helped and uh, worked with me, and um, even those who challenged me uh, with uh, some of their uh, behaviors and aspects uh, because uh, it made for a growing experience uh, for me as well as uh, for good decisions in the life of the church. So as you celebrate your 40th anniversary, I uh, hope and trust that your best days lie ahead. There is a lot of challenge for you, but I know that uh, the remnant and the framework is there uh, for you to begin anew into another decade of ministry and mission. God's blessings upon you. Greetings to my friends there in Beckley and United Methodist Temple. I am so thankful and humbled that I was asked to be a part of your tribute project as you celebrate your 40 years up on that hill and doing ministry in that community. And as Paula and I moved there in 2017, you so graciously and warmly welcomed us into your community, into your church, into your lives. And I'm thankful for that as we got to journey together for a while in ministry 
to reach people in that community. I, I loved walking into the sanctuary before daylight and watch the sun rise and come through that beautiful stained glass window. Uh, it was also a very, uh, always a very special feeling. Uh, but I love the ministries going on at the church with Burlington and the Folk Project and the daycare and preschool, all the kids, all the young lives that were being impacted because of you and the ministry that you are involved with and dedicated to. And also all the wonderful ministries we had in the outreach to the community with the archery and the music programs and the combined worships and, and different projects that we started just to be involved in people's lives. And I'm confident that as you go forward, you're going to be a powerful force to be reckoned with in that community because you have a heart for the community and you have a heart for the people there who are hurting and do not know Jesus as their Savior. So be strengthened in that. Continue to find new ways to be engaged and involved and to reach out and to love your neighbor as you love yourself and as you love God. And may you be blessed in this endeavor. May God's kingdom grow because of it. And I wish you the very best in the future. God's blessings. Good morning and welcome for the opportunity to address all of you gathered for the United Methodist Temple's 40th anniversary of being on the Hill. Chris and I enjoyed our time with you. Memorable moments included the music program, the uh, serving that all of you did, the outreach that all of you did, the wonderful people we encountered and the staff with whom I got to work for approximately eight months before we were pulled out and sent to a new a new church. Uh, we enjoyed being there. It was almost home for us, being 20 minutes from where I was born and raised, as many of you know, and we don't get back often enough. We wish we could have been back for this very, very special occasion. We wish you well. We wish you all the best. And I know that United Methodist Temple, under its current leadership, will be able to regain some of what it has lost over the years and being able to minister to the people there in the immediate vicinity of Beckley, around Southern West Virginia, in the West Virginia Annual Conference, and around the world. Again, we continue to pray for you. We ask God's blessings on your ministry there in Beckley, and we, we look forward to seeing you soon. Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed taking a look back at some of those fond memories, those amazing milestones, and even some of the struggles, some of the doubts and the fears that have defined Temple's history, that have brought us to this point in time. But now it's time to turn our attention to what lies ahead. As we celebrate the past, it awakens within us the possibilities for the future. What will our legacy be for the next 40 years? That's kind of the question that lies ahead. As we celebrate this anniversary, it should stir within you the possibilities that lie ahead. It should create new imaginations, new visions of what we could be. It should rekindle that flame of faith that maybe has grown a little bit dormant, and it should unite us once again to be the best example of the body of Christ that we could be. That's our legacy. That's what's been left to us. And now it is for us to pick up that mantle, to pick up that baton, and carry it forward for the next generation. How will we respond? How will the next generation remember us? And so, no, so now the work begins. It's time for us to roll up our sleeves, to unite together with one voice, to be a leading advocate for the cause of Christ in our community. Friends, I invite you to get started, to create a new legacy, a new history that will define Temple for the next generation. Come on, let's get started.